Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to a very special episode. Today we are celebrating 10,000 subscribers. Thank you so much everyone. We're celebrating 10,000 subscribers with a 10 year ahead outlook. I thought it would be really fun to look 10 years into the future and we should take a look at the world. We'll see what's going on. Uh, and we'll also take a look 10 years ahead for each one of you individually. So if you are just going to dash off and watch your mini report, uh, and I will be saying this at the start of every single mini report, I will be saying, please watch your moon sign only. Okay, I've written them all out. And yeah, as I was writing the notes, I was realizing, oh, this is this is moon only. I can't do this from the ascendant as well. I would want to be saying slightly different things for the ascendant and because we're going 10 years ahead uh, I wasn't able to write it all in, in such a way that it would work so you can only watch one report this time so if you're sticking around for the waffle the intro and a bit of world events stick around for that pull up a drink I am going to cheers all of you cheers thank you for the 10,000 subscribers this is coconut water I'm just looking in the screen there it is looking a little bit of an unusual color isn't it it is cocobana coconut water that comes straight out of a carton <laughs> the good old Aussie way you got to have your you know drink the best drinks come from a cardboard box in Australia that's what I was told uh, and and tinnies as well don't forget tinny and a sanger on a Sunday afternoon that's how it's done but here I've got coconut water in my beautiful uh, vintage glass crystal look at this it'll go ting for a long time do you see that that is vintage crystal that I got from the British Heart Foundation I have a knack for picking up bargains from uh, secondhand shops here in England. I love going into them and inevitably I will come out with some kind of beautiful something or other like this. So cheers, cheers to all of you. I shall take a sip. Oh, it's fantastic. Yeah, definitely a two week vintage on this, but uh, yeah. And you pull up a chair, pull up whatever drink you like. And let's have some fun shall we now of course i can't have anything more crazy than that because i have work to do here but you are free and welcome to get whatever you like whatever drink you would like to relax with and let's have a little astrology party here today so we're going to take a look at the world 10 years ahead and do you know what has happened i must tell you all this before i started writing the notes for this I had two very influential emails come my way. Now one was from, and it's very appropriate that it comes from this dear friend of mine in Bali. She sent me an email where she actually went to some lengths of putting many years into the future. I mean, I think she had some predictions in there that were about through to 2050, something like that. I've read that email once. I'm gonna read it again tomorrow after I edit all this. I only just read it once because I didn't want it to influence me too much. But I remember in there one of her predictions, she wrote something about 2026 as being a very important year, a pivotal year, sort of new energy. I'm pretty sure that's what she wrote. It's very incredible that, and I hope you're watching if you are my dear friend in Bali. Thank you for sending me that email because I that was important in order to get me to write up these notes. Uh, and she is also one of the very first three subscribers of this channel. Herself, her husband, and my friend in Somerset. These are the three people who started this channel. I started this channel with those three. So isn't that incredible? So um, yeah, I. it was amazing that she wrote me all these predictions for the many years ahead. Then I got another very influential email from one of you. One of my clients sent me an email with the subject heading something like I can see 70 years into the future and I thought wow what's this and this client of mine um, I'm very grateful thank you so much this client put together like okay 
you know, this year this is going to happen, that year that's going to happen, you know, you actually summarized it for me and gave me the video link. When I clicked on the video link, I was like, oh, I remember this video. I saw this ages ago. And it was really good to watch it again because that content, I'll, I'll tell you which bits have influenced me here. I will put a link to that video below. Those of you, if you would like to watch that video, you can. Uh, it's, it contains a near-death experience where this person went to the other side and they could see something like 70 years into the future. But that's been fascinating for me because I was always due today. It's a Tuesday, I'm wearing red, right? Mars Day. I was always due today to write these notes and those two emails, which were quite influential and, and very helpful, have come in and helped me put together what I've got here today. Uh, how I've put together these notes is that I have looked up Vedic Astrology. That is my number one tool of choice. That's what I use all the time, every day. Um, but I am also incorporating in here, I've got some uh, numerological scribbles here. And I, if anyone was to read through this, they would probably think I've gone mad because these pages are just filled with numbers. Um, so I have looked a little bit at the Vedic numerology as well to come up with some of what we've got here. So shall we begin? I'll just read out what I've got and then we will go moon sign by moon sign and I'll take a look for each one of you. So the first and the other thing I want to tell you is that I'm not going chronologically like okay 2023, 2024, 2025 like this. You're going to watch me dart around a little bit here. Okay so I hope that's all right. Um, bear with me but I, I am a little bit out of order and it's a bit chaotic but hopefully by the end of this you'll see what my thoughts are on, on what's coming up. So I'm going to start with 2026. 2026 is going to be a year of new beginnings. Okay, numerologically it is a number one year. So I do think we're going to have fresh new energy. I think a lot of the great difficulties that the world has been going through and is going through, that should I think largely be be done. Uh, there will still be problems going forward but uh, I'm definitely seeing that things are a lot better 2026 onwards for sure. I've got here written 2026 is the first year when America will start to regain a sense of feeling, feeling good again because I can imagine at the moment in America things are unsettled. Thing, there's probably just a background feeling of this is really odd what's going on here, you know, and, and that's because America is coming up to a very significant Plutonatal return. And that's really going to be felt across, I believe, 2024 and 2025. Okay, these are going to be the two years. And I think I've got a note on the next page. Yeah, I might as well read this out now. 2024 and 2025 are uh, the last two very difficult years for the United States. So what do I mean by that, the last two very difficult years for the United States? I mean that this is going to be like where, th where things are not going to feel great, but I think there's the rebirth is really coming 2026 onwards. Things should feel a lot better there. And yeah, I've got here due to Pluto natal return 2024 and 2025 are very challenging years for the United States. Also, if we look numerologically, we have got a number eight year and a number nine year across 2024 and 2025. So a number eight year 2024, that is Saturn. So, you know, Saturn can be a contracted energy um, think of and think of winter you know what does Saturn do right we've got Capricorn and Aquarius and that's harsh winter you know the, the leaves are off the trees it's, it's contraction it's winter it's bare it's it's not fruitful right so that is 2024 that is a tough year I do think for the United States 2025 I think is another tough year for the United States uh, and that's a number nine yeah, there, but I think there's some more energy because Mars comes along and yes, nine is an endings. We're ending cycles in 2025, but we've also got Mars here, which is an injection of energy, which is, you know, um, 
things are getting busy again kind of thing, right? We, we can see that there with the 2025 year. Uh, so if we're looking at numerology, as I said, 2026 is a number one year numerology, numerologically. Now, the next number one year that we're going to have numerologically is 2035. Okay, so what I'm seeing in 2035, now I think this is probably beyond, it is beyond the 10 year ahead mark, but that's okay. Uh, I'm sure people won't mind. I'm going a little bit further here. I've got here, we are so much more evolved as a people, as humanity. Uh, we've got Saturn in Cancer, Uranus in Gemini. I've got here, there is a recognition that our population needs rebuilding. People will be encouraged to have children. I do think that I know some people on the planet today are worried about, oh, the world is overpopulated. But there are quite a few very clever voices out there speaking at the moment saying, no, 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 that's not the problem at all. What we're going to have, you know, in say, for example, 10 to 15 years is we're going to have a big sort of a lot of aging. Uh, a lot of the population will be aging and there won't be enough new young people. So I think 2025 is going to be a t 2035. Did I just say 2025? I meant 2035. 2035 is going to be a year where, as I say, yeah, the, the population will need rebuilding. Um, people will be encouraged to have children. That is going to be a higher priority because what I see in this numerological cycle that we are in now is a lot of confusion. So as I'm saying, 2035 is the next number one year after 2026. What was the number one year that we had before? And that was 2017. So from 2017 to 2026, I've got here, this has been a time of mass confusion. And I think this is quite true because when I look back to 2017, 2018, 2019, I'm pretty sure that was the time that we had Saturn in, and I am going to go back and take a look at this. That was when we had Saturn in Sagittarius, wasn't it? Yes, Saturn was in Sagittarius, 2017, 2018, 2019. And the big thing that was going on there at the time was the Me Too movement. And for me, it felt like that was the time where confusion began and it's kind of just been intensifying. That's how I'm seeing things. So from I've got here from 2017 to 2026, 20, this has been a time of mass confusion. I've got here, this is because the United States, our global leading culture, Okay, because that's what it is, right? It's, it's the dominant culture in the world today. It still is. Now we're going to talk about that in a moment as well. Um, but it still is our leading culture. And I think that the reason 2017 to 2026, this is a time of mass confusion, is because the United States is in Saudi Sati. And Saudi Sati is a time when Saturn passes over the moon. It's a challenging period of time. It's not easy. The United States is in Sarisati. It has been in Sarisati since Jan, Feb 2020. And this finishes June 2027. Okay, so this period of time is going to be the most challenging for a world leading superpower. Okay, because that is what the United States has been for many decades. Right? got here June 2027 onwards there will be a much lighter feeling definitely in the United States and that will impact the world as well although power is shifting I'm going to talk about that in a moment uh, another reason for mass confusion is also because so yes it's because across the 10 year cycle that I mentioned from 2017 to 2026, there's a big Sati Sati of a world leading superpower, right? So that's one reason for confusion. But the next reason for mass confusion is because the United States is also in Rahu Mahadasha. Okay, and Rahu Mahadasha can be, 
a confusing time for people. It can be very challenging. It is a time of great ambition. And uh, let's have a look. When did the United States begin its... Um, Rahu Mahadasha, that will be quite interesting. Let's have a look here. So a time of great ambition. Wow, look at that, 2016, interesting. Because it will go to 2034. Yeah, and I, I do think 2035 is, is definitely a start of new things for the world and new and better things. I know that Diana Cooper talked a lot about 2032. I think she wrote a whole book about that. And she has some incredible predictions as to what the world is gonna be like 2032 onwards. But I really think kind of 2034, 2035, 2035 onwards, definitely with the number one year numerologically. I mean, that is gonna be, that is gonna be a, a real time of new things um, a new octave of peace you know we would have cleared out a lot of the old pain and old things that have come up for healing so let's take a look at this so it's interesting that USA will enter Jupiter Mahadasha from 2034 onwards and I've got here this coincides with 2035 being a number one year it's very close right because you've got a dasha sandhi period happening on either end of a when you close out a, a mahadasha you open a new one yeah there's about a year or two grace period anyway so we've got a fresh new start really 2035 onwards i've got the note here this will be a, gr a time of great wisdom and expansion in the world Now I do have here 2024 could be the year of a central bank digital currency uh, when that launches. This is kind of tying in with the NDE that I'm going to link people to below that video. I think this was one of the predictions in there that we're going to have a central bank currency 2024. Astrologically I, I can see that kind of thing. We've got Saturn in Aquarius, which is innovation. Jupiter in Taurus is an expansion in the monetary system. So that's April, May 2024 onwards. Uh, so when we're looking at Jupiter and Saturn both, I am seeing that these two big powerhouse energies could be contributing to a central bank digital currency in the year 2024. That's very likely got here 2025 could be a year of endings cycle will close out in this year it's a nine year so power shifts from the west to the east and this is where I think because we've got a number nine don't we 2025 yep it's a number nine year and this is where I'm seeing this is why I'm saying like 2024 and 2025, I feel a, a vulnerable, like they're, they're tough years for America. This is where America is most vulnerable. Okay, 2024 and 2025. The, the, this is where the United States is, is very vulnerable. And so 2025 onwards, I've got here power shifts from the West to the East. A lot more deals are done in Yuan currency. So this could be where America is no longer the financial economic powerhouse that it was. But I still think America and the West generally, I think the West generally will still be culturally the leading global power kind of thing. Because I don't see, like in 10 years time, I can see that most countries will be trading in yuan currency. I can see that. But in 10 years time, are we all speaking Cantonese or Mandarin? I don't think so. I think, you know, the language is going to remain the same. I think culturally, a lot of things will remain the same. So I think that the United States will still be, you know, very, very powerful in that way. But economically, maybe not. Maybe, you know, this, this could be, 2025 is a year that could be a time where we see a lot more power shift over to the east. 
it's kind of happening now already. There are a lot more countries that are doing deals in the yuan currency. That is happening now. So, but I see that 2025 could be a year where that shifts uh, and happens a lot more. If we have a look at United States, yeah, that is a number two year personally for the United States. So it's like the one-on-one -on -one relationships that the United States has with countries that's changing. Those one-on-one -on -one relationships, maybe some of those aren't, um, aren't going to be there in the same way. The next prediction I have is now this is quite influenced by the video that I'm going to link to below. Uh, so now the, I do want to talk a little bit about that video below because the video that I linked to is of someone who had an NDE, right, a near-death experience. And I listened to it again. I, I'd heard it months and months ago and I thought it was quite interesting, but I listened to it again today before doing up these notes. And the NDE part it, it, which is the first half of the video, basically. You can just skip ahead and listen to the prediction bits if you want to, but if you want to hear the NDE, I'm not convinced by it. I don't think it's a real near-death experience because if you look at the writing, there are bits of ego within there, especially the part where they say, oh, I wish I could go to my doctor and say I told you so. NDE people don't talk like that. I have watched maybe, I don't know, maybe a hundred different NDEs by now. I've watched tons of them. I love them. And I've read Anita Morjani's book. Uh, I read that a few times actually when I was into it. Um, I'm pretty sure it's called Dying to Be Me. Um, I had that on my old Kindle. I, I read and reread, especially the end part. Um, then there's Eben Alexander, Proof of Heaven. I've got that on my shelf. Uh, Brian Weiss, I've read a lot of his stuff and I went to his workshop in London. So the NDE thing is something I'm very familiar with. I love it and I study them. And I'm not convinced by the story that is being told in that video, but the predictions were really very interesting to me and especially the one about 2028 is the year that Trump could come into power. I thought, oh, that's interesting. I've never heard anyone say that. And when I looked it up on my astrological system, because I know he's been in the news lately and I've seen the headlines and, and I thought, oh, I should look at that as a case study thing. But I didn't because I just thought, oh, I don't want to look at it. And then because I had to do notes for this and because I watched that other video and there's this thing about 2028 20, Trump is in power, I thought, OK, I have to take a look at this now. And I've been really amazed actually by what I've seen. Um, I, I think there's something in this that, that this is a theory, okay? Look, he might be running for 2024 election and he might be elected and he might get in. Yes, that is very possible. But this is also possible, this theory. 2028 uh, is the year that Trump could come into power again. Um, I've got here, astrologically, this is very possible. Saturn will be in Aries in 2028. This will be stimulating his Mars in Leo in the first house. All right. So that's that Mars in Leo in the first house, which is a very important star for him when it comes to leadership, putting him in power, all that kind of thing. Now, Mahadasha wise, he is running Jupiter's sun period. Okay. Sun is in the 10th house, right? So that's very significant. We've got Saturn will be sixth from his moon. Again, very significant. That Saturn is going to give him opportunities, rise, success. Opportunities, rise, success. Okay, so Saturn wants to gift him things. Saturn will be six from his moon. For 2.5 years, Saturn wants to gift him things. Saturn will be ninth from his ascendant. Okay, ninth from, that's fire, that's leadership. That could put him in a power of leadership as well. Um, we've also got Saturn 10th from natal Saturn. Okay, so when it's something really big, I will check Saturn's position from natal Saturn as well. And that's really strong there too, 10th from natal Saturn. So again, we've got career in, really in focus at this time, but all of these little ingredients here, to me, this is all adding up to 
him being in a position of power. Um, now, another thing that I, so I started to look at all this 2028 thing and I thought, okay, I can see some very strong Vedic astrology arguments backing up this prediction of Trump being in power in, in 2028. Now, another thing I started to think about was, so this is where my mind went after this. I thought, okay, he's been in all this legal trouble at the moment. And I started thinking, could he go to prison? So I wanted to look into that. So the, the way I did that was I looked up Martha Stewart's chart. And I haven't got any notes on Martha Stewart, but I'll, I'll bring her up now and I'll just see if I can come up with some kind of uh, incredibly quick summary of what I saw there. Because what I saw there, and then when I compared that with Trump's chart, I thought, ooh, I think he might, be, he might have a bit of prison time coming up. So I'll tell you why. Um, now, I'm pretty sure her dates, if I've got this right, gosh, I'm having to do this from memory. Um, I think it was something like 2005, uh, October 2005. Let's go back to 2005. Uh, yes, we've got Rahu in Pisces. All right, and we've got Saturn just about to go. I'll have a look. And then I'll, I'll put stuff on the screen and, I, and I'll, I'll summarize it for you. I haven't, I haven't got notes on this one. But basically what interested me was that she's got Rahu in Pisces and that's active on the line where prison is there in, in the 12th from the Ascendant, right? And then we've got Saturn 8th from the Moon. What happened to her was that for a few months she was in prison and then for two years she was kind of under house arrest. She was monitored electronically. I don't know if they put something on her, but she, yeah, she couldn't leave her home. I think she was allowed to leave maybe 48 hours every week or something like that. And what I was thinking was, could that happen to Donald Trump as well? Um, now I've got some dates written in the notes here for him. And what I've got here is that Donald Trump could be in prison from November of this year we're going to have Rahu in Pisces for him. And I'm saying that he would be clear of prison. Um, so it's like it's, he, he, could, he could go in there from November this year. He could leave prison, uh, I would say, by latest May, June 2027. That's, that's one of the theories that I'm seeing here. This may happen, it may not. I don't wish bad thing on anyone. I, I don't want that to happen. But what I'm, I'm just trying to read the language of astrology here, and I'm just trying to read, you know, what is going on. I actually do just want to bring up his chart because I want to double check and see uh, what it is that I am seeing there because I want to check the Pisces in. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, hang on. Yes. Rahu in Pisces would be eighth from his ascendant. Yeah, that's, that's not looking too good. So, um, it's a possibility that he could be and let's say it's not prison, let's say it's some form of house arrest or something like that. Like what happened with Martha Stewart. You know, I'm, I'm seeing some similar things there. Um, yeah. I think that was it for the world predictions. I'm just checking my notes. Yes, that, that's, that was all I had for the world predictions. But I was thinking about things like um, for example, would United States, you know, have some kind of civil war? I think just intuitively, I, I don't think so. I don't, I don't particularly see that happening because what I see is that the last three years have been so um, exhausting for everyone. I think that people are thoroughly exhausted. I think there are a lot of people who also, there's a lot of... Um, there are kind of people having tension, unrest, like mental health issues are very strong at the moment. And I just think people are exhausted. I don't think 
there's going to be some kind of civil war type thing. I, I don't know. I don't see that happening. We've got a lot of uh, Saturn is moving through Aquarius. And this is a time where healing is needed. There's also a lot of people need, a lot of people are burnt out. A lot of people are exhausted. A lot of people are just, you know, uh, they don't have the energy. They don't have the time, energy or money or strength. I don't know. I don't see that there's going to be some kind of civil war or this kind of thing. Uh, I, I don't see that happening. I can see maybe that there are powers that are trying to provoke it. But also I see that those powers that are trying to provoke it, they have, they have very much underestimated the amount of awakening that has gone on on the planet. So it's not like we're exhausted and lazy. No, I think it's actually that we're awakened and exhausted and, and lazy. I think, there's, I think there's been far too much awakening. I don't know. I don't see um, things going too crazy. But having said that, th th there is a lot of unrest and fighting and energy and all of that happening in Paris. I've seen some of the footage from there and that is extraordinary what's going on there at the moment. Maybe there will be some form of um, protest or something like that. Yes, I can see that. I can see people standing up. I, you know, I can see people protesting. I can see there being energy in that regard. Definitely over this year, so up until about March 2025, the energy is strong for protest. But civil war, no, I don't think so. Um, I'm not seeing anything like that. And if we're looking at a 10-year block, am I seeing something like you know, nuclear war or something like that. Again, no, I'm not seeing that. I know last time when I talked about Rahu and Jupiter being conjunct, I think I talked about, I mentioned the word nuclear and a couple of other words, and I think I mentioned war. I, I hoped people didn't think I was trying to say that there's going to be some kind of nuclear war. No, um, I was saying something stupid might happen with Rahu and Jupiter in the sky together across April to November. But I didn't want that to come across that, oh, there's going to be a nuclear war. No, no, no. I, I didn't mean that. What I think is happening is that, um, so if, as I say, 2024 and 2025 are key years where a lot of power is going to shift over to the East, the West is going to have to flex its muscles kind of thing or show military might or something like that. So I think it's going to be something like that those kind of activities are going to happen where it's kind of like guys who have got f fancy cars or really powerful cars and they want to show them off but they don't want to smash them up it's that kind of thing that i think i'm seeing that's the kind of stupidity that i'm seeing say for example across uh, april to november i know that there is a materialization of you know a little something happening uh, with um and I'll, I'll probably talk about this when i do the rahu jupiter video. I don't know, maybe, am I going to talk about it now? I'm just looking at the time. No, uh, I can do just very quickly that they're going to do some kind of test, some kind of emergency broadcast test or something like that here in the United Kingdom. I mean, to me, that's an example of, you know, why? Like, to me, that's a bit of a, it's not stupidity, but it's, it's a bit of a Rahu Jupiter kind of a thing. You know, it's like, well, why are we doing that? We've never done that before. Um, and yeah, I've heard that a lot of people are just going to have switch their phones off. You know, I might be one of them. I, I don't, when I go out, actually, I don't even take my phone. Um, I leave it at home. So, you know, unless I have to meet a friend or something, in which case, yeah, I'll take my phone. But yeah, anyway, that was an example, a materialization. And look at that, that emergency broadcasting. I'll put it on the screen. That is um, a materialization of this Rahu Jupiter energy. It's going to happen after Rahu and Jupiter get together in April. So it's that kind of thing that I'm seeing, but I'm not seeing like a nuclear war or the end of the world or any of that. I'm not seeing that. Um, but I am seeing, you know, ongoing tensions, challenges. Sure, this, this, the Earth is not an easy place right now. And I think we're going to get to a, a better place 2026. 2026 to 2035, it's going to be interesting to see what that period is, but I do think 2035 onwards is a real new octave of peace and uh, goodness in the world. 
I do think things are going to improve. Things always do, guys. The light always wins. We've got to believe that, right? I'm going to do more videos about that. I've got a video coming where I want to talk about some of that type of stuff. All right, well, let's take a look at the mini reports for everybody. So those of you who like to watch all of these, stick around. Um, this is going to be an interesting one. It has to be for the moon only this time. I tried thinking about from the Ascendant as well and they are ever so slightly, it's, it's, it's around Saadi Saadi. Saadi Saadi is what's making it so that I can't have you look at your Ascendant and your moon as well. Okay, so it just moon only that makes this possible. So those of you who would like to watch the whole thing, join me. I am actually going to have a sip of my coconut water. <laughs> what are you doing on time? 12 minutes. It's okay. Well, I stitch it together probably 30 minutes by now. But yeah, I'll have a sip of my coconut water. This is so good. I love this stuff. It's really good for you. It has potassium in there. What else does it have? I don't know. It just has lots of good stuff and very healthy. <laughs> and I need it because it gives me energy. All right. Let's begin, shall we? We are celebrating today, guys. Uh, so why not? And I was thinking, do you know, I was thinking, what should we do at the 100,000 mark? And I'm thinking, okay, I've thought about this. And I'm thinking we could fly to Amsterdam and we could have some kind of, they have these really cool tea shops where you go in and they've got like, um, see, only those of you who are watching, <laughs> who've watched all of the intro get the juicy stuff. So I'm thinking, right, Amsterdam, and we go, and they have these amazing tea shops. And I went there one time with my friend and the guy that he was like, well, you could have this kind of tea and you have a nice little trip from that. And he said, oh, you can have this kind of tea and you have a very different kind of trip. And I was like, okay, well, how, how much for the nice trip? And he said, oh, it's like 10 euros for one cup. And I was like, hmm, and I thought about it. And I thought, well, for 10 euros, I can get myself like a nice little necklace from the market we just went through. I went with my friend. And um, that's what I ended up doing. I think I saved my 10 euros and I went back to the market and I bought a little necklace instead. But yeah, I mean, maybe we do that. Maybe we have some tea in Amsterdam. Or I thought we could get like a real coconut and... You know, I, I mean, this this coconut juice is nice, but let's get let's get a real coconut and go to like Sri Lanka or something or a beautiful beach, South India, something like that. I think that would be so much fun. So yeah, um, I'm thinking big for a hundred thousand. You know, I might have some money by then. <laughs> It'll probably take me ten years as well. Um, all right. Well, anyway. Let's get on with the show. So Aries moon, let's check the time. We're okay. Aries moon, Aries moon, welcome. Okay, this is Aries moon only. Don't watch this for your ascendant. Don't watch this for your sun or any other planet. Just watch Aries moon. Okay, so you can only watch one this time, everybody. So currently, where are you, Aries moon? All right, you are Saturn 11th from the moon. You're in a platform building time. I love it. So you're in a time where Saturn is actively giving you opportunities. He wants to give you opportunities, okay? Uh, money, wealth, you know, he, he wants to build you up. He wants to give you friends. He wants to bring you your tribe, potentially bring you a partner as well. If you're not really feeling it, it could be that maybe your Sarvashtaka Varga points score for this house is on the low side. The other thing is from your ascendant, Saturn could be in a, in a difficult place. All right. So if you're not feeling the energy that I'm talking about now, there are reasons as to why that is so. Um, but just for a simple general overview, you are in a good time frame right now until March 2025. Okay, now after that, it's very important you make the most of this time up until March 2025 because after this time period, you're going to be in Sadi Sadi period for seven and a half years. Now, this can contain challenges, all right? Sadi Sadi is not, um, it's not always bad. I don't want to say that either because I've seen many of my clients 
they have children at this time, you know, they buy a place or they move or they pay off their place or they start a business. People start amazing big new cycles in Sarisati as well, especially when it's your second Sarisati. Okay, if it's your first one, it might be quite challenging. But if it's your second or third, usually people kind of have the swing of the energies by then and, and, and they're actually profiting or building or constructing or, or doing amazing things. So, but don't worry if, if you feel bad during this time or, you, you know, there is some loss or something happens, now you know why. Okay, so the first little chunk of Sarisati, that's going to be Saturn in Pisces, March 2025 to June 2027. This is Saturn in Pisces 12th from your moon. This is a time which can be marked by loss. There can be loss of health, um, loss of energy, loss of earnings. Uh, but it's a brilliant spiritual transit where you become very, very wise, okay? And you will learn the art of deep surrender and you will emerge out of this time with a new groundedness, with a new level of stability. It really is amazing, okay? And it, it, it can be difficult at the time while you're going through it, but there is some you know these things there's always some reward there's always some good thing that comes after now Saturn in Aries okay so that's June 2027 onwards up until about April 2030 uh, Saturn in Aries is first it's right on your moon okay so now you're going to be working hard so that's June 2027 to April 2030 you're working hard um, your daily work could be a good refuge. You might love your work. You know, you might be just so grateful that, oh good, I get to go to work every day. You know, um, Saturn will be working you hard at this time. You could be starting a new 30-year cycle in some area or in some aspect of your life. This particular sector, June 2027 to April 2030, is also going to be demanding something of you. It's going to be asking, who are you? Okay, and that's something that you can get to some depths of figuring out. Now Saturn will be in Taurus, that's April 2030 to May 2032. This will be in your second house. So you're coming out of Sarisati period, you are starting to build savings, you're starting to earn money, you're rebuilding your security, you're rebuilding yourself. Okay, you're building up your health, you're starting to feel really good. All right, so that is what's happening there. And then you're going to have a beautiful time in your life. Saturn in Gemini, May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years. Saturn will be third from your moon. You are in a wonderful platform building time where new opportunities are coming your way. Saturn is just putting things, wonderful things on your path. He's just giving them to you. He's just gifting you. Uh, and time is likely to take on a faster pace as well. But Aries Moon, that is what I'm seeing for your 10-year outlook. It's been brief. Obviously, there's a lot more I can talk about. I could look at, you know, I did look at Jupiter a little bit and Rahu and all that kind of thing. But I, had, I did have a look, but I'm mainly focused on the Saturn transits there. I hope you enjoyed that, Aries Moon. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome... Taurus Moon. Taurus Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Taurus Moon only. Please do not look up your ascendant. Please do not look up your sun. Because we're looking 10 years into the future, I can only really look from the moon. Okay, I have some astrological reasons as to why, but that's another video for another time. All right, Taurus Moon, let's take a look. So, you are currently building up your career. Saturn is 10th from your moon right now in Aquarius. So Saturn is going to be putting you in the spotlight, uh, you know, and he's going to be helping you iron out the kinks in your career right now. Okay, right now up until about March 2025, you are career focused, you're busy, you're working. Okay, um, if you're not doing career or working, there's something about your responsibilities increasing or you are in demand more than usual. Okay, now you begin your uh, Saturn 11th, okay, so Saturn in Pisces, apologies there, Taurus Moon, Saturn in Pisces, March 2025 onwards to about June 2027. So this is Saturn in Pisces 11th house. This is a platform building time, so Saturn wants to gift you 
new things. He wants to expand your ability to take on more wealth. He wants to bring you a partner. He wants to help you move or upgrade where you live. This is a really positive time. Saturn will be giving you more clients, more money, abundance, promotion, really good things. That's March 2025 to June 2027. Okay, that's a really important period for you. Make the most of that period because then for 7.5 years after that, you are going to be in Sarisati. And in Sarisati, it sometimes feels a bit like Groundhog Day. It sometimes feels like you are restricted, like you're wanting to grow, but it's just difficult. Okay, um, because you might be a bit more sensitive at this time. Saturn's going to pass over your moon. So that's going to start for you June 2027. Saturn will be in Aries in your 12th house. So this represents a time of potential losses. Okay, loss of energy is possible, you know, loss of health. You might just be a little bit more tired than normal. Um, could even be something like loss of reputation. We've got Aries here. So there could be some loss of reputation or something like that, or your standing or something along those lines. Um, this is a challenging transit. Okay, so that's June 2027 to April 2030. That's the that's a challenging bit there. Um, the next bit could also be a bit challenging. Saturn in Taurus. This is April 2030 to May 2032. This could contain some challenges. The whole thing is not challenging. Don't worry. It's not. It's just like here and there. You might have a few tough weeks here and there. Okay. So um, Saturn in Taurus, April 2030 to May 2032. Saturn's going to be passing over your moon. So you're likely to be a lot more sensitive at this time. And Saturn is likely to work you hard. Okay, so you're going to be working hard and work might become some kind of refuge because sometimes there's something going on in life. But what you find is that actually thank God for my daily grind and you, you start to really like your work. You can throw yourself into work as a bit of a remedy. Now, Saturn in Gemini this is May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years. Um, you're coming out of the Sati Sati period. You're still technically in it, but you're coming out and it feels better. And you're starting to build wealth. You're starting to build savings, stability. You know, the hard work of Sati Sati is largely done and you're going to start to feel some recovery energies come in. And don't you worry, because after that phase, you're going to have a good 2.5 years of reward. Saturn is going to gift you a lot of things after that as well. So Taurus Moon, keep going. You're doing amazing. And we are now going to welcome Gemini Moon. Gemini Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Gemini Moon only. No Gemini ascendant, no Gemini sun, nothing else, just the moon. Only watch one today, all right? So uh, Gemini Moon, welcome. Now, where are you currently? You've got Saturn ninth from your moon. So you are currently building up your authority. You are building up your presence, your leadership, your presence, your leadership skills. You are building up that sense of authority. You are taking your power back. So you're figuring out where was your power invested? Whose opinion did you used to care about? And whose opinion should you be caring about? Your own. You should really only care about your own opinion, right? Um, well, that's what the strong people do, you know. <laughs> but it's true. It's true, though. I'm, I'm thinking of Karl Lagerfeld. He once said that. That's one of his quotes. He said, I only care for my own opinion. Wow. Look at the power there. It was all concentrated within him. You know, he was pretty amazing. Um, I always find him very inspirational. So I've got here the note, authority figures might be being hard on you. Uh, how can you stand up to others? How can you lead the way? You're currently in a time of leadership. You know, you're, you're figuring out your authority rather than a parent being the authority, society being authority over you. What do you think? And what do you believe in? And what do you stand up for? That's what's important, Gemini Moon. Now, Saturn is going to be in Pisces after that. So we're looking at March 2025 to June 2027. Saturn's in Pisces in your 10th house. So that's building your career. Uh, career is going to be in focus and your responsibilities are being expanded. Okay, we've got Pisces here. We've got Jupiterian energy here. So there's an expansion of the responsibilities. I've got here that you can shoulder a lot more in life. So that's going to be March 2025 to June 2027. 
Then we've got Saturn in Aries in your 11th house. That's June 2027 to April 2030. So this is a platform building time. Uh, 11th house, this is huge. So this is Saturn is going to gift you promotions, money, opportunities, wealth. This is what time when I've seen people buy apartments and houses and they get married. You know, this is classic sort of life expanding time for you. So this is June 2027 to April 2030. Make the most of that. Then you're going to start your Sati Sati for 7.5 years. That's April 2030 onwards. So that's Saturn in Taurus in your 12th house. So some losses are possible here. Um, it could be financial losses. We've got Taurus here. So some kind of material or financial losses are possible. Uh, surrender and letting go of material desires are really going to help you at this time. You're going to be able to master surrender. And that's a great power to have. Because if you master surrender, nobody can buy you. Nobody can own you. Okay, so be grateful for a 12th house transit. All right, they are very good things uh, when you work with them. Look after your health would be my tip there. So that's April 2030 to May 2032. Definitely look after your health at that time. Now Saturn in Gemini, May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years. That's going to be Saturn on your moon. So you are possibly being worked quite hard by Saturn at this time. It could be a very busy time for you. Um, could be a faster paced time for you as well. Gemini moon. That is what I'm seeing in the years ahead. I'm wishing you well and I'm wishing you make the very best of your 11th from transit. That's June 2027 to April 2030. All right. Thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Cancer Moon. Cancer Moon, welcome. Now this is Cancer Moon. Okay, so please do not look up your ascendant. Do not look up your sun. Just look up Cancer Moon. All right. And that is because the reason is because, you know, I'm reading Sati Sati placements. It's a little bit different to Ascendant Path. Um, so, yeah. And as well, we're reading many years ahead. So let's take a look at this. Now, you are currently transforming your life. Oh, my goodness. Cancer Moon, you are going through big transformations. If you haven't felt them yet um, over the next couple of years, look out for this because you're in a life changing time. This is Saturn eighth from your moon. So Saturn can transform your whole life, your career, your family, um, finances, all kinds of things, marriage, all that kinds of things could be completely transformed at this time. So that's from now until March 2025. Okay. You might be trying to grow. You might find that it's a bit restricted uh, at the moment. Okay. Um, now Saturn is in Pisces in your ninth house from March 2025 to June 2027. So this is your ninth house, March 2025 to June 2027. This is a time of guru where you either manifest a guru. This is where guru comes to you. All right. You don't go seeking anybody. When guru comes to you, it's very profound. It's, it's something extremely significant and profound. And very often guru is sometimes not even on the earth plane when it's a real deal incredible guru situation it's somebody on the other side that you develop a connection with um, so this could manifest for you at this time if you are ready equally this could be a time where you step up and in your world you become a teacher to other people okay uh, your beliefs will expand as well. So this is March 2025 to June 2027. Your beliefs are expanding. Um, you're becoming very skilled at something. So perhaps you are doing further study, executive study, something like that. You're becoming very skilled. You're becoming the authority. You're becoming the master at something. Okay. And then Saturn in Aries, June 2027 to April 2030. Saturn will be 10th from your moon. So you are in the spotlight now, you are working. So all that you've learned in the previous transit from 2025 to 2027, now 2027 to 2030, you're going to be applying that. Spotlight's going to be on you. You can work hard and you can achieve a lot if you put effort in and you're using up those great skills that you have been busy studying, mastering, all that kind of thing. Now Saturn will then be in Taurus from April 2030 to May 2032. That's in your 11th house. Okay, this is really, really important. 
This is an excellent time of gains, wealth, abundance pouring in. You could meet or marry a life partner in this time. Um, by the way, I mean, you could meet and marry somebody tomorrow, okay? So like, don't just wait. Don't wait until April 2030. But what I'm seeing here is when Saturn wants to give to you, oh, he gives, like it, it comes in. You can't stop it kind of thing. So this, when we're looking at a big Saturn transit, we're looking at destiny. We're looking at big stuff here. So, I mean, you could be, you know, you could be dating someone but then you're really committing to them here April 2030 onwards um, but as I say don't don't wait for a life partner but there's definitely somebody could come in here as well or, or you marry commit to someone in a very strong way so that's April 2032 May 2032 um, abundance gains wealth that is the time you want to make the most of every single day of that time April 2030 to May 2032. Remember that. That is highlight time for you. Then you're going to begin your Sati Sati for about 7.5 years. Okay, so that is May 2032 onwards. That's Saturn in Gemini. Uh, we're looking at 12th house here. So that is a time where losses are possible. Um, loss of energy. Uh, earnings could drop a bit. You know, look after your health for the next 2.5 years from May 2032 onwards. The Cancer Moon, I am wishing you well for the next 10 years ahead. Thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Leo Moon. Leo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Leo Moon, only Leo Moon. No Leo Ascendant, no Leo Sun, nothing else. Just Leo Moon, okay? Just watch one this time. Uh, so I've got here, your commitment is currently being tested and deepened. Saturn is seventh from your moon. Okay, so you could be in a relationship at the moment with your sweetheart, your marriage partner, someone that you are committed to. Uh, and that relationship could be being tested, okay, at this time, up until about March 2025. Um, if it's not a relationship, there will be something in your life that requires your commitment. So it could be your business. Definitely, if you're self-employed, that requires total commitment. Um, your art, your public, okay? Something in your life requires your commitment. And you have to give your full attention to that. That commitment is probably being tested and deepened. Uh, this is also a time of expansion of self as well, who you are figuring that out. Now, Saturn is going to be in Pisces in your eighth house. This is from March 2025 to June 2027. So this is actually a really private, really quiet time for you. Um, you are deeply spiritual, perhaps at this time. And this is also a time, March 2025 to June 2027, where your whole life could change. Uh, your whole life, especially your career, could totally change and transform. Your family life could change significantly here as well. Um, occult gifts can come online for you at this time. So it is really quite a profound and deep time, March 2025 to June 2027. Then Saturn will be in Aries from June 2027 to April 2030 in your ninth house. So who you are could be being challenged by higher authorities. Um, perhaps it's time for you to lead or teach others. Perhaps it's time for you to step up and become the guru. Or perhaps it's time for you to, and this could even be starting your own business or, or doing your own thing. Especially because you've just come out of that eighth from transit. And so a lot of the times that eighth from transit, so that's March 2025 to June 2027, that is transitioning you to run your own business. Okay, so really, I mean, it could be that June 2027 onwards, you are really running your own business. Um, you could also be manifesting a guru at this time, or you could be skilling up. So you could be doing some form of executive education, further training, learning, anything like that. Now, Saturn in Taurus, this is April 2030 to May 2032. This is your 10th house. So you are shining. Um, your confidence is going up. Your ability to be in the spotlight, maybe you are in the spotlight, that is being increased as well. Um, you're going to be taking on more responsibility at this time as well. 
And then we've got a beautiful thing happening for you, Saturn in Gemini, May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years. This is your 11th house. So this is beautiful. It's a platform building time. This is where you are granted promotions, wealth, abundance. Hi Leo Moon, I think it cut out there. The battery was flashing, I did see it. But I think I was talking about promotion, wealth, abundance. I was telling you all the good things, wasn't I? So that's Saturn in Gemini, May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years. Huge, that's your 11th from the moon phase. This is, this, is, this is where all the good stuff comes flooding in for 2.5 years, all right? So that's May 2032 onwards. You're gonna have a good time. Um, a fast paced platform building time where you are granted promotions, wealth, abundance. You might commit to a long term partner. You might get married. You might move. You might buy an apartment or a house. Any of those kinds of things. Some people even have a, have a child. You know, they, they get married and have a child right here in this 11th house, 2.5 years. I've seen that. Um, typically, I have seen though a lot of weddings take place uh, during this. I've also seen a lot of people move. A lot of people get promoted. A lot of people just money pours in. It's just fantastic, right? Um, so that's May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years, Leo Moon. Then after that, you will start, you know, your Sadi Sadi period. That's where it gets a little bit more challenging. Saturn likes to gift you good stuff just before, you know, he does some real work with you. So that's how that works. All right, Leo Moon. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome... Virgo Moon. Virgo Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Virgo Moon only. Okay, no ascendant, no sun this time, right? Just look at one only, and that's your moon. So, Virgo Moon, welcome. Now, you are currently in a platform building time. This is Saturn, six from your moon. Oh, I love this. This is so good. You're in a great time right now. <laughs> I like talking about when you're in a good time now. So, let's reinforce this. You are in a time period up until from now until March 2025 where Saturn wants to gift you things he wants to promote you he wants to give you more clients he wants to expand your business he wants to give you opportunities he wants to bring people into your life people in connections into your life now if that's not happening for you and you're going oh well, that's not really happening for me then from your ascendant Saturn could be doing something else okay and I didn't I haven't covered the ascendant this time um, it's, it's another video I'd have to do um, but what I can say to you is that you can also look up your Saravashtika Varga point score for the house um, and you can see what that is like um, there are other factors at play all right if 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 you aren't feeling that those opportunities are coming through or it's, it's not happening for me there can be other things going on but you are in a time now until March 2025 um, and sometimes it might take a bit of time for the energy to warm up as well so maybe it's a little bit too soon to judge but you, you should have some really good stuff come into you, to you up until March 2025 now what's going to happen after that is that there will be kind of some work to do, right? Saturn will get you working. So Saturn will be in Pisces from March 2025 to June 2027. And Saturn in Pisces is going to be in your seventh house. So your commitment to your marriage partner, your sweetheart, whoever you're committed to, your commitment to them is going to be expanded. It's going to be tested right the focus will be on your love life and who you're committed to or who saturn wants you to commit to sometimes the planets are orchestrating themselves they, they, they're encouraging you hey commit to this person you know um or break up from this one or whatever sometimes the planets are sometimes doing stuff with us aren't they and they're encouraging this and they're telling you to get out of that and all that kind of thing so a lot of that kind of thing is going to happen march 2025 to june 2027 um if it's not if you're not in a marriage or a committed relationship then your commitment will be tested to your path, to your business if you are self-employed, to the work that you do in the world, your public, also to yourself, your commitment to yourself, your relationship with yourself. Do you trust yourself? Okay, there's a lot of self and other work 
that can go on here. Um, Self-differentiation work, you know, all this kind of thing can come up. Who are you? A lot of that type of stuff. Now, Saturn in Aries in your eighth house. So this is June 2027 to April 2030. Okay, your whole life could change at this point. This is very significant for you, Virgo Moon. June 2027 to April 2030, your life could change in a big way. Um, I've got here, take extra care. Okay, this is Saturn in Aries in the eighth. We've got Mars here. So I want you to really take extra care. Um, you know, th this, this can be a juncture where, yeah, it's just spontaneous things happen, things like that, but just take extra care. That's all I'm saying there. Now, career can change totally. Uh, also, big changes in family or how you live, where you live as well. Sometimes people may move here, but um, just big change. That, that's what's possible here. June 2027 to April 2030. Now, Saturn in Taurus, April 2030 to May 2032. You've got Saturn in Taurus in your ninth house. So you could manifest a guru at this time. Uh, you could become a guru to other people as well. There's something about you skilling up. There's something about you possibly taking on further education, executive education. You're skilling up, you're getting ready, you're building authority and you're building expertise. And you're building all of that because Saturn will go into Gemini, May 2032 onwards in your 10th house. And that's a time where you're going to put all those skills to use. And it's a fast paced time of career growth and success. You are putting all that you've learned to excellent use. And Virgo Moon, I am excited for this time for you. I'm particularly excited for the time that you're in now. You're in an incredible time now. Make the absolute most of it because you're in a platform building time. So whatever you build from now until March 2025 will be very good and will be something that you yourself will love across these next many years. The time that you've got to watch out for is really June 2027 to April 2030. That is going to be your time of greatest change. Okay, so be ready for that. Have some money saved before June 2027 if you can. Okay, you're going to want to be financially conservative uh, from June 2027 to April 2030 if you can. All right, but that's what I'm seeing for you there. All right, Virgo Moon, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Libra Moon. Libra Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Libra Moon and Libra Moon only. No ascendant, no sun. Don't look from anything else. Today, just look from your moon. So what I'm seeing here is that your love life is currently being tested. If we have a look at where is Saturn, Saturn is currently fifth from your moon. So your love life is being tested. You know, are you with the right partner? What kind of partner would you want to be with? Who do you choose? What, you know, one of the things about the fifth from the moon, we're looking at choices here as well, okay? Because creativity is here. Creativity is all about choices. You know, one of the simplest creative acts is going shopping. Why do people love shopping so much? It's a, it's a cheap and easy form of creativity, right? It's like you, oh, I chose, I chose this red top today, you know, and I pair it with a gray scarf or, or whatever, right? Like that's a cheap and easy form of, um, of creativity. So your choices are going to be under scrutiny at this time. Uh, it could be your creativity that's being scrutinized. It could be your relationship, your love life. It could be your relationship with your children that's being scrutinized or, or, or tested by Saturn. So this is through to March 2025. Um, also your speculative financial investments, that is going to be in focus from now until March 2025. So after that, you're going to have Saturn move into Pisces in your sixth house. This is March 2025 to June 2027. Okay, this is a platform building time. This is an amazing time for you. And Saturn is going to expand your career. He's going to give you promotions. He's going to give you money, wealth. He's going to give you more clients. He's going to expand your life. It's going to be really good. He could give you a partner at this time as well. Um, there's a lot of winning energy here. Okay, so things should really go in your favor. 
So that's March 2025 to June 2027. Please make the most of every single day of that window that you've got there. Now, Saturn, after that time, Saturn in Aries in the seventh house. So that's going to be June 2027 to April 2030. So you could be committing to a long-term partner at this time. Your partnership with the person you're married to or your business partner, basically your partnerships are going to be tested at this time. And another thing that you're going to be tested on is how I've got here how committed you are to yourself and to your work as well. So it's it's both. Now, if you're not in a committed relationship, um, it, that could be more testing of love life, but it could also be testing how committed you are to your path, to yourself. Do you trust yourself? Okay, all that kind of thing will come up. Um, also, your relationships. Do you look after yourself while you are in a relationship? Okay, that's another thing that could be being tested. That's June 2027 to April 2030. Then we've got a big changing time for you. So this is Saturn in Taurus, April 2030 to May 2032. Saturn will be transiting your eighth house. So your whole life could change. All right, this is huge. This is really, really big. So this is a time where your career could change significantly. How you earn money could totally transform at this time. We've got here finances and family life could change significantly at this time. Then we've got Saturn in Gemini in your ninth house from May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years. So Saturn will be in your ninth house. So you might be traveling a lot more. Uh, your relationship with authority is being tested. And this is ideally a time where you are taking your power back. You're taking your power back and you, you don't care so much what the outside world has to think or what your parents have to think. You care a lot about what you believe. And who knows, you could start to become the guru to other people. So that's May 2032 onwards. Um, I've got here, do you walk your talk? And it's also a time to skill up. This could be a time where people take on further education, executive education, things like that. All right, well, Libra Moon, it looks like a big time ahead for you. I think you're currently in a really good phase right now. So make the most of the transit that you're in right now up until March 2025. All right, thank you so much for tuning in. We are now going to welcome Scorpio Moon. Scorpio Moon, welcome. Now this is Scorpio Moon only, not Scorpio Ascendant or Sun. Please don't look up anything else. Only look up the Moon for this report. So you are currently in Saturn Dia period. All right, Saturn falls from the Moon. Dia period is an up and down sort of a. That's how I I've learned it to be. That it's it's full of ups and downs, uh, and I remember my one. And it was full of ups and downs. It had some really good things in there and had some really bad things in there too. So that's how I remember my Saturn Dio period, fourth from the moon. I've got here, you could move home. You could buy property at this time. Uh, be careful of mother's health. Mother's health could be impacted at this time. But look out for ups and downs, okay? It's, it's, it's not going to be a straight line, this one can be spiritually profound. Uh, any of those of you who are deep on your spiritual path or really doing your spiritual work, you could meditate and profit from that a huge amount at this time, really uh, up your meditation. All right, now Saturn in Pisces in your fifth house, this is from March 2025 to June 2027. So your romantic life will be being tested by Saturn at this time. And it's really your choices. What choices do you make in love, in creativity, in life? That's what Saturn is going to be testing. I've got here your relationship with your children could be tested at this time. Um, your relationship with your creativity could be tested at this time. You might want to be more creative at this time. Also your ability to invest financially could be expanded at this time. Now, Saturn will be in Aries in your sixth house. This is from June 2027 to April 2030. This is a platform building time. If you work hard during this time, you can really achieve a huge amount of success. 
um, this is a highlight time for you Scorpio Moon June 2027 to April 2030 make the most of every single day of that window of time okay so platform building Saturn wants to gift you opportunities wealth money he, he might help you move um, he could give you a partner he could help you fall in love a lot of really good things can happen for you June 2027 to April 2030 truly make the most of that time now Saturn will be in Taurus from April 2030 to May 2032 so for you this is in your seventh house you might be committing to a long-term partner you might be getting married at this time um, ideally you are also committing to yourself so if there's a partner or if there's no partner it doesn't matter um, ideally you are committing to yourself as well so you are looking after yourself while you're in a relationship with someone else you're not neglecting you okay that's what's going to be important there so ideally you are committing to yourself and you're committing to your spiritual path as well um, you could also be committing to your business projects especially if you're self-employed if you have a public uh, like social media platform something like that you are committing to your public as well so it's a time of great commitment then there's Saturn in Gemini May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years um, Saturn will be transiting through your eighth house okay May 2032 onwards your whole life could change all right that's a really big transit and that could be a massive career change where you totally change career in some significant way I've seen a lot of people with this eighth house transit they finish a corporate career and they start to run their own business that's one of the things I've seen could be big changes in your family could be big changes in your finances as well but some big major thing is going to totally transform and change at this time so that's May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years but Scorpio Moon I want to thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Moon Sagittarius Moon welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Sagittarius Moon only okay please don't look at your ascendant or your Sun or any of that don't look at anything else just look at one report today all right Sagittarius Moon wow and I've got a little star next to your hmm I don't know what that's doing there all right we'll find out you are currently in a platform building time so you're the only sign that has a little star next to them so I'll, I'll figure that out as I get into these notes all right I'll find out why we'll both find out why um, you're currently in a platform building time you are in a great time oh I know why I know why because I know why the little star is there Sagittarius moon you are the only sign in all of the predictions that I'm going to make today you are the only sign that within the space of 10 years you are enjoying you are going to enjoy two platform building times how extraordinary we all get that opportunity in our life but you are in that opportunity now okay so that's very exciting uh, you're going to be gifted twice in this 10 year wow that's awesome all right it's dawned on me I now know why you got a little star next to your name you got a great thing here Sagittarius moon um, so right now you're in a platform building time this is where Saturn gifts you okay so this is Saturn third from the moon Saturn wants to gift you promotions he wants to give you abundance wealth connections especially right now he's third from the moon he wants to give you courage he wants you to go and socialize and have fun and feel light and feel happy all right really really important that you do that from now up until March 2025 make the most of this time that you're in now then Saturn will move into Pisces so this is from March 2025 to June 2027 Saturn will be fourth from your moon so something to do with your home could expand or you might renovate or you might upgrade something in your home you might move you might buy property okay be careful of your mother's health um, it's a great time for spirituality deepening your spirituality meditation any of that uh, but it's also known this is dire period March 2025 to June 2027 it's a time of ups and downs okay so watch out for that period 
Then you've got Saturn in Aries in your fifth house. This is from June 2027 to April 2030. So your romantic life might be being tested or your relationship with your children um, is being tested. There's something about your choices are going to be scrutinized at this time. Could also be your investment choices are being scrutinized at this time by Saturn. Now Saturn in Taurus, this is the one where you're going to do well again. Wow, I'm so happy for you. Uh, this is April 2030 to May 2032. Saturn will be sixth from your moon. So you have another platform building time. My goodness. This is where you can get great financial abundance, uh, more clients, growth, winning energy. If you're single, Saturn will bring you a partner. He's going to give you what you are due and and you know the good karma that you are due you will cash that in at this time April 2030 to May 2032 remember that now we've got Saturn in Gemini May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years going to be in your seventh house so you are either deepening commitment to your marriage partner you might be getting married at this time um, or if marriage is not the thing uh, you are committing to your path and you're committing to who you are and what you're all about. There's some deepening of commitment at this time from May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years. Sagittarius Moon, I am wishing you well. You are one of the lucky uh, signs here that within the span of about 10 years you are profiting big time twice very fortunate on you good good on you <laughs> Sagittarius moon uh, well done and we we all eventually get this some of us have to wait like 15 years before we get this kind of thing but you have it now all right so thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Capricorn moon Capricorn moon welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Capricorn moon only please do not look up your ascendant or your sun or any of that all right so what's going on Capricorn moon you are currently uh, yes look at that you're currently winding down your Sadi Sati period you are you are finishing what has been a tough time in your life and a lot of people who get to this stage where Saturn is now second from your moon you're kind of used to it you know you've had five years of it and you're just like this is this is it now and I've observed when people are at Saturn third from the moon oh they feel all light and they feel all happy and they're like oh is this what it feels to be normal it's like because you've just had Sadi Sati for seven and a half years you've kind of forgotten what what good times are not that you've had no good times okay that's not what I'm saying you would have had some good times over the past five years you would have but this last five years would have been tough for you and, and especially for you. Look, you've had it tough. Capricorn Moon, yeah, you've, you've gone through the really tough stuff because I think you had the last chunk, uh, which was the toughest for everybody, even if they were not in Sadi Sati. You had it. Oh, man, you, you had a tough time. J Jan, Feb 2020 to Jan, Feb 2023, yes. That period would have been very hard for you, I know. Um, the energy should start to be improving now. What are you doing now? Up until March 2025, you are going to be rebuilding stability. You're going to be building up your savings. You're going to be building up your wealth. You're going to be building up your health. Okay, that's what you're doing now, up until March 2025. Now, Saturn in Pisces, March 2025 to June 2027. Saturn will be third from your moon. This is the good stuff. So you are going to celebrate leaving Sati Sati. Saturn is going to expand your life. He's going to give you wealth. He's going to give you abundance. He's going to give you partner, friendships, you know, good times. The good stuff's coming, Capricorn Moon. You deserve it. You deserve it. You really do. Um, then we've got Saturn in Aries in your fourth house. This is June 2027 to April 2030. All right, so you might move, you might buy property at this time. Uh, be careful with your mother's health. This could be a time of ups and downs, okay? There can be some challenges in here. Uh, there can be some real highs, but there can be some lows as well. So this is, this is a very up and down sort of a time. Then we've got Saturn in Taurus, April 2030 to May 2032. Saturn in Taurus in your fifth house. This is a great time potentially to start a new business. 
uh, it's quite interesting because I haven't read this fifth from transit in that way for anyone else but for you I am because this is Saturn in Taurus Venus is here Venus likes to make money so this could be a great time to start a new business it's also the house of the Sun as well that's why I'm sort of thinking Saturn Sun as well um, so yes it's a good good time to start a new business here April 2030 onwards it's a time of creativity your love life your relationship with your children all these things are going to be tested love life and relationship with children all these things will be tested your creativity will be tested this is kind of testing the choices that you make so Saturn will scrutinize that a bit more and then we're gonna have Saturn in Gemini this is May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years Saturn will be sixth from your moon this is beautiful this is another platform building time oh you are like Sagittarius moon so Sagittarius moon is not the only one. Oh dear I, I built them up a little bit too much just now well Capricorn moon I'm going to put a little star next to your name as well now here because you have got you're one of the lucky ones you are one of one other <laughs> sign that has uh, in the space of 10 years you've got two platform building times all right fantastic I'm very happy for you look at that so you've got you've got March 2025 to June 20 hang on March 2025 to June 2027 superb okay you're gonna make a lot of money succeed do all of that and then you're gonna do it again uh, Saturn in Gemini May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years oh brilliant so you've got another platform building time Saturn wants to gift you again he wants to give you promotions new clients a partner you know, whatever it is that you need and want the good karma this is the time for the good karma to be cashed in okay so that's May 2032 onwards oh well, so Sagittarius moon is not the only one with the star next to their name you've got one too now so Capricorn moon I am so happy for you because if anyone truly deserves it you've gone through the toughest stuff in the whole zodiac and you are due uh, good energy good times you know I hope you succeed well and enjoy all those times I hope that the world is very well and can yield a lot of good to you as well take care Capricorn moon and we are now going to welcome Aquarius moon Aquarius moon welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Aquarius moon only okay no ascendant no Sun nothing else just the moon you only get to watch one this time all right so Aquarius moon what's going on well wow yes you are at the height of Sati Sati all right yeah Saturn first from your moon this is a difficult time uh, and I'm just thinking actually of a couple of you that I know personally and you are going through a difficult time right now I know th this is not easy Sati Sati is a time where there is loss and um, I've got a a, a couple of people I'm just now thinking of three or four people in my life right now who have they, 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 they are dealing with bereavement they are grieving the loss of a loved one uh, and one of them I do know he is in Sati Sati period um, it is a time when we, we do we do lose lose family members they do say you know that in your first Sati Sati um, what do they say they say that you could lose a grandparent I heard this from Robert Svoboda in in the first side of Sati you could you could lose a grandparent in the second side of Sati you could lose a parent in the third side of Sati you got to watch out for your own health I have heard that so um, I'll, I just want to you to know that if you, if you are dealing with any bereavement loss any of that my heart goes out to you um, and just try to allow the feelings to come up and, and out if you're able to just grieve privately quietly in whatever way you need writing out journaling um, writing the stories the memories of the person that you love that's that's a good thing to do um, I remember when my dad left the earth plane I, I, I wrote whatever I could about him and that was very therapeutic for me so um, yeah I've got here uh, so sometimes people don't experience that kind of loss during Sati Sati all right but sometimes it's a loss of people lose a job or they lose uh, desire for life can happen as well 
um, you can lose, you can become detached. One of the things about Sadi Sati, it can feel difficult to expand, can feel like I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm not getting anywhere, it can feel like Groundhog Day. Um, you know, but what I've got here is the note that Saturn is polishing you into a diamond. Go with it and I promise you, you come out the other side diamond-like, okay? You will shine brighter than ever before. Now, this is going to change for you. Saturn will be in Pisces, March 2025 to June 2027, all right? This is... Saturn in Pisces in your second house. So you're going to come start to come out of Sadi Sati period. Your finances will be expanded. More stability is coming in. You will build wealth. You know, more energy is coming in to support you. It's going to start to shift. All right. And then you're going to have a really good time after that. This is Saturn in Aries, June 2027 to April 2030. Saturn will be third from your moon. So it's a platform building time. Saturn wants to reward you. He wants to gift you money, opportunities, abundance, connections, partner, friends, good times socially. Okay, so it's June 2027 to April 2030. Make the most of every single day of that time. That is going to be a good time for you. Uh, and you will feel lighter. Okay, you will, you will come into the energy of June 2027 and you'll just go, oh wow, like, how people feel is like sometimes it like if you walk through water for like seven years and then you get to come out of the water and walk through land how free that feels that's kind of what it's like so look out for that june 2027 onwards then we've got um saturn in taurus in your fourth house this is april 2030 to may 2032 you might move, you might buy property at this time. This is a time of ups and downs. Um, take care of mother's health at this time. Your spirituality could really deepen at this time as well. So that's April 2030 to May 2032. Then we've got Saturn in Gemini, May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years. This is Saturn in your fifth house. So your love life will be tested at this time. Uh, it could also be your relationship with your children could be tested at this time or your creativity. What's really being tested at this time is your choices and how you make decisions. Okay, so that is something to look out for there. Aquarius Moon, I'm wishing you well. I'm wishing you just strength to keep going. You are going to be amazing. You are going to get through this and you're going to come out stronger. You've got to believe me. I, I have been through a 12th house transit that was very difficult for me. And uh, yeah, I know what that can be like. That can be really very hard. Um, so I know those those strange transits where you, you fell down a hole, right? And it's like, how do I get out of here? Am I going to get out of here? You are going to get out. Okay, don't worry if you're going through a tough one. But some of you might not be. Some of you might be listening to this going, I'm okay. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> we like that. All right, now we're going to welcome. Thanks so much for joining Aquarius Moon. We are going to welcome Pisces Moon. Pisces Moon, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. This is Pisces Moon. Okay, don't look up Ascendant, don't look up Sun, don't look up anything else. Just look at your moon. All right. Wow, yes, Pisces Moon, you're at the beginning of your Sati Sati period. How are you doing? This is Saturn, 12th from your moon. Okay, this is up until March 2025. I hope you're okay. I hope that this transition is going to be easy on you. All right, some of you might have started to feel it already. Some of you might not be feeling it just yet. So from now until March 2025, this could be a time marked by some losses. You might just have some losses of energy. You might not feel as motivated. You might feel a bit detached from material things. You might um, not be as motivated. Sometimes that can be a thing or desire energy could be lower. Sometimes that could be one of the things that happens here. Uh, one of the things that you will become very good at if you go with it is surrender if you learn how to surrender this is from now until definitely until say march 2025 but definitely through until june 2027 this next five years if you can get really good at surrender or oh, you'll come out masterful and when you're good at surrender nothing can buy you nothing can own you you can't be fooled by the outside world anymore it really is quite incredible to 
go deep into surrender and to really get that process when you're good at surrender wow you become a force to be reckoned with right so you know that's why situations in life conspire to be difficult if, if you meet the challenge you come out so strong let me tell you so go with it all right go with this time that you're in so you're in it now until march 2025 equally saturn will be in pisces on your moon and that's from march 2025 to june 2027 so here you're going to experience an expansion of self um, it might be a time where saturn works you very hard Saturn might also be very tough on you as well. Okay, work though will be your solace. This can be a transit where people really put themselves into their work. Why? Because other parts of their life is not feeling the best kind of thing. You know, it can be tough. Um, so that's March 2025 to June 2027. Again, mastering surrender will help you get through. Now things start to ease and get better. Saturn in Aries. June 2027 to April 2030. Saturn in Aries in your second house. So stability will start to come into your life, okay? Things will start to ease. Saturn will help you to build up your wealth, help you to build up your energy as well. You will start to feel better. And you'll start to... Sometimes people, when they're in the, like that phase where Saturn is coming off the moon, they, they're just a bit numb, you know, because it's just like, well, I've been through this last five years that, you know, um, have been challenging and you just kind of become numb and it can feel a bit Groundhog Day. But then what happens is you step into Saturn in Taurus. This is April 2030 to May 2032. Saturn will be third from your moon. Okay, it's an amazing time. It's a platform building time. Saturn will gift you. He'll reward you. He'll give you good stuff. He'll give you opportunities, new connections. Money will just come in. Things will be just easy. And it, you know, it'll feel like you've been walking through water for several years. And then when you come into this phase, April 2030 to May 2032, you'll feel like you're walking through air. It'll just feel, oh, wow, this is what it feels like to be normal. You know, it'll feel really good. So look out for that. April 2030 to May 2032, you want to make the most of every single day of that time. It's going to be a good time for you. Then we've got Saturn in Gemini. This is May 2032 onwards for about 2.5 years. So this is Saturn in Gemini, fourth from your moon. This is Saturn Dia period. You might move or buy property during this time. Um, this is a time of real ups and downs where th some things will go really well for you, but equally some things will be incredibly challenging. The same thing that's gone well could just turn around and be really challenging. It can be a very challenging time, very odd time, this one. Um, because it's Saturn in Gemini, this could be a faster time of expansion as well. You might just feel that, wow, things are changing rapidly for me. That's May 2032 onwards for 2.5 years. Also, be careful of mother's health during this transit as well. But Pisces moon, I think that is all that we've got here for you. I mean, that is your whole Sadi Sadi period, basically. Uh, and we've covered a little bit of platform building time there as well. You do have a reward time to look forward to. That's why it's quite good to look 10 years ahead because we can see, all right, yes, we can see the tough stuff that you are going through now and will be for a little while. But look at that. You've got a terrific period of reward coming in April 2030 to May 2032. Those are going to be years that you will just remember and treasure and love because they're going to be really, really good. Well, I hope this has been a good overview for all of you. 10-year outlook. Wow, I've never done that before for anyone. I do do that kind of thing in a personal reading. If you book a personal reading with me, I will look sometimes 10 years into the future, 20 years ahead. Sometimes for one person, gosh, we went, we went a good 20, 25 years into the future. Um, he wanted his, uh, what was it? I think he wanted some Mercury Mahadasha, but he wanted like Saturn and Mercury Mahadasha both. I read them both. Um, yeah, that was an incredible reading. We went quite far into the future because he booked two in close succession. That's why. So I read the usual reading and then he booked another one because he wanted to go a bit deeper into the Mercury Mahadasha. 
we went quite far into the future there. But I want to thank you. I want to thank anyone who has watched this video all the way to the end. It has been a long one this time. We've covered a lot of stuff here. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making this video so much. I want to thank those of you, any one of you, I should say this at the beginning, I never do, but wow, we made it to 10,000 guys. Cheers again. I'm going to have my beautiful coconut water in a moment, but um, thank you so much. I'm having a ball doing this work. I love it. And yeah, thank you to anyone who's ever liked, subscribed, anyone who's ever made a booking. My goodness, if you've ever made a booking, you, you, you are making this possible for everybody. So honestly, a booking... I should have said this at the beginning, doesn't matter. A booking with me is, is not just helping me, it's helping keeping this whole thing free for everyone, helping keeping this whole thing going. So thank you so much to all of those of you who book. And um, yeah, I'm just having a ball doing this. It's so much fun. And hopefully I get to make more content. That's what I'm really looking forward to. I'm, I'm feeling a lot more settled in here now. I... Um, I think last week, was it last Monday, I cleaned my oven. Oh my gosh, and I had to do it on a Monday because on the Sunday, I was supposed to do it on the Sunday, but then I had this massive headache. And so lucky I had the Monday where I was going to make content, but then I was like, no, I have to do the oven. So, you know, that's why some of my content days are being taken up by house type stuff. But hopefully in a few weekends time, fingers crossed, I'm going to have all my house stuff organized and I'm going to be able to make some more content for the channel. That's what I really want to do. So thank you so much to all of you out there. Cheers to all of you. Chin chin. Oh, hang on. Let's get the ting going. <gasps> Isn't that a great sound? I got this from the British Heart Foundation on sale. I love going charity shopping to all the vintage shops and the charity shops here in the UK. You get the best stuff. But yeah, thank you everyone and I look forward to seeing you next time. <laughs> for me than I was for